Okay, in this video, we're going to discuss custom features, customizing the character mancer. So, custom races, custom classes, custom feats, uh, custom backgrounds, all that kind of stuff. So, why would you need to customize the Roll20 character mancer? Uh, it is an easy way to set up your Roll20 character sheet with custom content. Uh, you might need custom content if you're playing a homebrew class or a UA subclass, a uh, special race just for your DM's campaign world, or if you're relatively new to Roll20, you might not have a very expanded compendium. Uh, you might even just have the SRD basics that come with a free account. Uh, and in that case, you're definitely going to want to know how to add custom content. So I'm using an account that is a free account. It has no subscription. It has no purchases has ads all right so if i go over here i'm logged in as a player right now and the only thing i can see is the character sheet that my dm made for me in advance so you're as a player unless there's a special macro that's been enabled and all sorts of other fancy stuff you are going to need your dm to create you a character sheet but you the player will be able to um, edit the character sheet so let's do it I'm going to open this character sheet up for Princess 9. That is the character I'm going to make. There's nothing going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit edit, and I'm going to add some character art, because I like character art, and it's important. Um, so I'm going to drag over this lovely token to use as my avatar. There we go. And I'll hold off on the bio and stuff. I'm just going to hit save. All right, let's jump into the character sheet. I'm going to click character sheet. It's all grayed out. There's a pop-up here. How do you want to create this character? I definitely want to use the character mancer. So I'm going to click use the character mancer. All right. Uh, it takes me to the start screen. Explain some stuff. I'll hit next to get started. We go to race. All right. Well, I get to play a special custom class because my DM just is being super nice. Let me do whatever I want. Uh, so I could play one of these regular SRD races, but... Let's just go all the way. I'm going to play uh, uh, an, an ASMR, uh, ASMR. There we go. So I'm going to do custom. And there we go. I'm going to start filling it out. What's the name of the race? It is the ASMRs. Uh, what do they get? They get a plus two to charisma. All right. That was easy. Scrolling down. What alignment? I don't know. Lawful good. There we go. Uh, what size? Medium. What's the speed? Uh, 30. And then proficiencies. Oh, I have my numlock turned off. There we go. Um, proficiencies, we're going to do languages because they get two languages. So we'll do common. And we'll do celestial. Now, maybe they're a race that gets um, perception for free, like the elves. Um, you could set that up here the same exact way. So now i'm going to go and start adding in the custom race features now um the, the asmr have quite quite a few uh special abilities uh i'm not going to do them all so that we can keep this video a little short um, but basically what i would do is i would just start uh either copy and pasting over from my digital resources uh the information or I would just paraphrase it or retype it if I'm going off of analog print books. All right, I will leave that to you, to uh, whatever resources that you are going off of. And every time I add a new feature, I just hit add another feature and I add one in. So there we go. Uh, celestial resistance, punch it in, right? And we just kind of keep working our way through it. And I'm not going to do, again, I'm not going to do all of them because these guys have quite a few. And I want to show you some of the other stuff that you can do to customize it. All right. So race is taken care of. Now we go over to class. Now for class, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play as the princess class. Uh, and this was developed by Redditor Impersonator. And I'll link to it in the description. Uh, but yeah, the princess class is a fully realized... Uh, 1 to 20 class. I believe uh, they started work on it back in like 2016 or something. Um, so it's had a lot of playtest, a lot of feedback. 
It's a very well developed class. A lot of people like it. There is a noble version that is uh, non gendered. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, we're going to play as a princess. So when I go to choose my class, I am going to choose custom. And then I'm going to put a princess. There we go. They get a d6 for their hit die. They have a wisdom and charisma saving throw proficiency. Uh, they actually don't get any weapons or armor, which is kind of crazy. Um, but they too have proficiency in four different musical instruments. So for a musical instrument, I would go to tools. And then I would add musical instruments. And I would just repeat that over and over again. For skills, they get to choose three from a big list of skills. So I would go to skill. I would choose the skill that they have. And then I just keep adding until I had added all of the skills and proficiencies that they have. Then I scroll down to custom class features. And this is where I would start uh, copying and pasting over uh, the stuff for the princess. So one of the princess's abilities is to condemn. So I could uh, just kind of paste in from the document. Condemn. And then every time there is another feature for the class, I would hit add another feature and I would add that feature in. Uh, Princess is extremely robust um, with their features. It's like a bard warlock hybrid, um, but you would just keep adding those in as you go. Now, princesses don't have any innate spellcasting like a normal class. They're very much like supernatural abilities and stuff like that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, we're gonna pretend that they're a charisma-based casting class. So for spellcasting ability, I'm gonna go to charisma. And I'm going to say that they start the game with two cantrips and two first level spells. And that their spell list most closely resembles a bard. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to go to abilities. And I will punch in whatever abilities I came up with. If I did point by, if we roll dice together as a group. Uh, whatever that needs to be. I'll go ahead and put in those abilities. Man, I must have rolled really good for stats. Okay. Uh, for background, if you don't have anything except the SRD, you only have Acolyte, that is okay. Um, a quick Google search can find you lots of backgrounds, or if you have the background uh, in your player's handbook or any of your analog books, you can just sort of copy it in. How do we do that? We're going to go to Custom, and for this one, I'll just copy over the Noble background. And let's see, the Noble background... Uh, provides you with the following bonuses. Thought I had it open in another one. Here we go. History and Persuasion. So again, I would go to Skill. I would go to History. And you might see as you're doing this, the screen kind of darkens for a second. Right? Everything kind of gets dark, right? It's just thinking. It's just the computer thinking. Uh, let's see. Persuasion. There we go. Uh, they also get uh, tool proficiency, uh, which is a gaming set. So we'll just go to, uh, let's see, dragon chest. There we go. And so on and so forth. You would do that until you had all four of your associated background skills, and then you'd put in your background um, feature. Now, if you are making a custom background, of course, check with your DM to make sure it's allowed. The easiest thing to, to tell your GM is that you really want to be a noble uh, and have the noble's position of privilege, but you just don't need the abilities, history, and persuasion because you're XYZ kind of noble, so you should have these skills instead. And usually the DM will be like, yeah, that's fine, whatever. Um, you scroll down here. Uh, we don't need to do this stuff for the custom video, but that's where you would fill in your personality stats and stuff. Now we go to equipment. This is something that is lacking. So the princess class, we can't actually tie any equipment to it at this time. So we will have to manually add that after the character master builds the character sheet for us. So we go over to the spells tab. We lied and told it that we had spells. So we get to pick two cantrips. They are gonna give us the bard cantrips because that's the class we most closely resemble. If the cantrips you're looking for are not here, you could always just leave them blank or you could select some and then change them out after the character sheet is generated. So I'll try to leave one blank just to double check that you can actually do that. And then for spells, We'll just grab these two right here, sleep and charm. Those sound like princess spells. 
feats. Uh, you don't have any feats enabled because not a variant human at level one, so don't worry about that. And bio doesn't have any bearing on this video, so we'll just keep going. All right, we review it. It says, hey, you forgot some stuff, and we're like, that's fine. Um, if there was like a red X next to something that you forgot, you would have to go back and complete it before Character Mancer would complete. But we did a good job. So we're going to hit Apply Changes. And it's going to build our character sheet for us. So we now have our custom race, our custom background, and our custom class all built in automatically. Pretty cool. Um, because we built this custom class, every time we level up, it will uh, ask us if we want to level up as our custom class, and it will make things easier as we continue to build out that custom class through gameplay. Now, we didn't have any equipment, so we are going to go over to the compendium. Even though this account is bare bones, the SRD does have a pretty decent selection of stuff. So even though this uh, lady is not proficient in any weapons, let's go ahead and give her a long sword. So I'm just going to drag that over. And magically, it gets added to her inventory, and two macros are built. Pretty cool. Uh, so we could do that for all the stuff that she needs. So she doesn't wear any armor, but she probably has some fine clothes. Drag that over. Uh, she probably has a diplomat's uh, pack, so we drag that over. And she probably has some, I don't know, soap. Let me drag that over. Cool. Um, so, yeah, you could just sort of fill up your inventory as needed just by dragging and dropping stuff. If you had to put something manually, you just hit a plus, and then you type in, so, uh, key to the city. Mm. Um, whatever you need, kind of put it over there. Starts the game, I don't know, a thousand gold, because she's a princess. Sweet. Um, what else? Here you can see the abilities that were inputted. Uh, so if I hit this, it says Celestial Resistance. There you go. Automatically pops up for me. Cool, cool, cool. Um, same thing if I wanted to throw up my position privilege, I could do that. And if I wanted to add more of these manually, I just hit this plus thing and I could continue to add them. I could even categorize them by race, class, feet, background, or other, and then give it a subtype so that, um, I could remember, oh yeah, I got this as an as a ASMR because I hit level 3 or whatever. So, pretty cool stuff. Um, so that is how you add, uh, you know, like a custom feat, for example, or um, additional custom racial abilities that you unlock through leveling, or um, new class features that you add that way. So, uh, there you go. Now, as far as spells go, if we click on this tab right here that says spells, we can see that Vicious Mockery is in there, Charm Person Sleep, and we still have uh, the ability to add more spells. So if we came over here and for some reason princesses could cast Eldric Blast, uh, we could type in Eldric Blast, look for it in the spells, and just left click and drag it over, and it'll automatically add it, and then add a macro, or at least it should add a macro. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we could go in here and double check on it. Oh, uh, okay. So it is just telling us about Eldric Blast. But we could go in and turn it into an attack by clicking on this. Uh, scrolling down and to where it says output, we say, I want you to be an attack. Uh, and there it is. Ranged attack. It does a 1d10 force all right and we don't get to add our ability modifier to the damage or anything like that because we're not you know like a real warlock or anything uh it's a cantrip all that jazz do we want to include a description sure so it'll throw up the description every time we attack with it cool so now if we go back over there should be an eldritch blast for it nice uh yeah, and there we go. Um, boom. Does the damage and everything, just like that. You can use that same principle to create custom spells. So over here in the spell tab, uh, you could scroll down and find the plus sign for the spell level that you need. And you could start building out whatever spell you needed. So if you had a homebrew spell, or if you had a spell that you wanted that you didn't have in the compendium, this is how you would add it into the game. Now that can get tricky and complex, so there will likely be more videos about building custom spells later, because it can be a little tricky. But for now, I am just illustrating that you can add um, 
any sort of custom con content you want to the game. So uh, the character sheet, character mancer, it supports it. Um, it's very important to remember that, that as you are getting ready to play in Roll20, uh, you are not uh, restricted by your lack of purchasing Roll20 products. Would Roll20 like you to purchase other products? Totally. Um, would it make your life easier? Absolutely. But do you have to do it? No. You could definitely go in and do this. Uh, for those players out here, out there that think that this is too much work, listen. Your DM agreed to let you play a custom class uh, in their game, and if you think that this is a lot of prep work on your end, imagine how much prep work it is on the DM's end, trying to get everything set up on Roll20 to play online with you. So just, you know, follow along the video, fill out your custom content, and enjoy being a princess. Uh, so, hopefully you like this video. If you want to know more about Character Mancer, I'll link my other video about Character Mancer in the description. Um, hopefully, between these two videos, you are able to create uh, and manage the character uh, of your dreams and continue playing D&D online with your friends and family. And I will see you in the next video.